Mbembe, a petition has emerged calling for the disqualification of Chidima Onwe Adechina from the Miss South Africa pageant. Adechina, a 23-year-old beauty queen, was born to a Nigerian father. To speak more on this now, let's welcome Sandra Makwasha, South African Human Rights Commission uh, Commissioner. Thank you so much, Sandra, for your time this afternoon. Firstly, let's get your response as a Human Rights Commission about the kind of outrage, you know, by some South Africans over Miss South Africa finalist at China and how she should not be representing the country based on assumptions that her parents are not of South African de descent, in, at least in, in as far as the mother is concerned. There's also, of course, been this petition that uh, she be removed. Um, good afternoon to your listeners and thank you for welcoming me to your show. I think the South African Human Rights Commission noted the statement by Miss South Africa, the Miss South Africa organization stating that the participant has met all the requirements to participate in the Miss South Africa pageant. But it's also important and we note and we warn members of the public against making sexist, xenophobic and racist comments which fall foul of the constitution as well as the Equity Act, especially the prevention of unfair discrimination. We also would like to encourage members of the public to adhere to the South African Social Media Charter, which is a great document for guiding them in these type of interactions. But I mean, uh, just the kind of outrage that we are seeing um, is one that does, you know, give, make one worried, in fact. I mean, what, what do we make firstly about the selective outrage? Uh, you know, what does the outcry over a young woman who was born in Soweto, uh, who has been at pains to explain that whilst her father is Nigerian, her mother is of, uh, you know, is, is South African with the roots in Mozambique. I mean, what does that tell us about how we as South Africans, firstly, we struggle, you know, to deal with systemic structural issues and contextualizing these in terms of our, you know, colonial race and xenophobic, um, you know, uh, history. Um, and also, secondly, fundamentally, uh, why are we still struggling to embrace uh, fellow Africans, if I can put it that way? I think that is a very um, difficult conversation to have, and that is why the Human Rights Commission has the SHINE program, which allows people to have these conversations. It's important to have robust conversations around these issues, around Afrophobia, xenophobia, and identify where are the core issues arising from, and refrain from having these comments that almost amount to, um, that amount to, uh, sorry, sexist, xenophobic and racist comments, which then infringe on an individual's rights to be treated with the dignity that is enshrined in our constitution. And I mean, uh, you raise a, a point of uh, having these difficult conversations. I mean, I, I think it is high time that as South Africans, we, we have the difficult con conversations, especially as you mentioned now, uh, the response that we are seeing that is very selective in, in as far as um, it could also be assumed to be quite sexist because we've seen, you know, those uh, sports players who are not necessarily from South Africa receive quite the opposite uh, reception w than what we are seeing today. I mean, when we open that door then of having these um, discussions, where should we start? Where should, be our, where should our starting base be? Because as you rightfully put, you know, these are quite hard um, conversations given the fact that there's also a lot of disappointment um, domestically here in South Africa that South Africans are now, you know, you know putting squarely on the feet of foreign nationals particularly. I think the conversation starts with where our country starts from, and that's our constitution. We are a constitutional democracy, and the constitution gives everyone who is in South African specific rights. So that's where the conversation needs to start. But we also need to make sure that our conversations are respectful and within those uh, constitutional values that we are so protective of. And that's where we believe as the Human Rights Commission, we have the social media charter that allows us to have these robust conversations but still respectfully and allowing these conversations to take place in safe con places you know when you have a conversation it has to be safe it has to be robust but within the confines of the law and i mean as human rights commission how widespread is this we are hearing within this particular instance that um a lot of concern also leveled at the fact that uh you know black on black hate is still very much prominent amongst our communities 
We don't have the numbers because, look, um, the South African Human Rights um, Commission deals with numerous complaints. As you will know today, we were also dealing with the, the prominent one about racism in schools, which is still occurring to this day. So we I don't have the numbers at stage, but I think it's important that when we do reflect on it, we go back to why are we having these issues and how do we then have organizations such as the Human Rights Commission leading in these robust conversations. Mm, and I mean, you also raise a, a very important one in terms of uh, South Africans having to face a, a lot of internal, you know, domestic issues as well. You mentioned race, which is another big one in this country. What is disappointing in, in as far as racism in schools is concerned is that uh, we are dealing with children that are essentially born, you know, um, Recently, you know, the young children they, that don't have that um, context of the apartheid uh, history that we come from. So where does this problem essentially emanate from? Are we talking about educators here who are being irresponsible at schools and not really uh, having an anti-racism approach? Are we talking about parents of these children who are still um, stuck in the past and really not uh, advancing, um, you know, the, the, the cause of anti-racism, of cohesion? in this country. I think it's very important to have that conversation. And like you said, where does it start? Is it teachers? Is it parents? Because as um, you know, my favorite quote by Nelson Mandela is that hate is learned. It's not something someone is born with. So we need to understand where are we learning this hate? Is it because of the social media platforms that allow freedom of expression, misinformation? And how do we then hold people accountable? And like I said, I'm going to refer to this and it's the social media charter by the Human Rights Commission. It's a beautiful guiding principle and it applies to children as well. It's in a language that is easy to understand and it has the ability to help us have those conversations in a safe environment with that respect that is needed. I guess uh, there is more education that is needed in as far as that social media charter is concerned. But Sandra, thank you so much for your time. Sandra Makwasha is from the South African Human Rights Commission.